Disney, Disney, don't you love Disney? Isn't such family friendly and stuff? Oh boy. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Oh, that's a good one. I couldn't say that was a strange face. Like, now, this is the, uh, hey, um, time is coming by. I want you to go and try to get Tara and, um, my buddy Tara and, uh, myself to watch it because I want them to watch my show. Most of all. Yeah, it, it, yes. And, um, so, <clears throat> This is a story about a survived rape victim and who is a fairy. Now, they do a good job. They use very subtly this uh, story. They, they, there's lots of stuff saying, uh, you see, um, this movie's called Maleficent. Oh boy, don't I love this film. I see this is my favorite Disney film uh, for live action. The characters feel real and relatable and likable. And my favorite character is Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty, who I really didn't care for in the original at all. But here they actually give her some actual depth. So, anyway, so the story's about, and I'll tell you when the rape part comes and towards Maleficent, and boy, I was like, my hope that you can um, play along. And, um, now, now, um, in Maleficent, she falls in love with this prince, this uh, knight, who uses her toys with her emotion when she, who, well, kind of makes love to her and sleeps with her. And when she's sleeping, he chips off her wings and she vows vengeance when she finds out that she lost her wings just so he could be king of the castle. Now clipping off the wings while she's sleeping against her free will, that's the rape part. Now, for those of you who have their heads so shoved up the ass that Disney, what kind of singing, what kind of children film is this? Well, and for that I answer, and I know that's you, John Hotara, I know you're, so you're singing, you're singing, why would the, anyone put this in a children's book? Well, that's because, uh, another reason why I believe the race system does, is, is fault because they do this kind of stuff. And every, almost every film, uh, to tell a s complex story. And, or they just do it just, be, just because the heck of it, just for the fun of being an asshole. I think it's that one. <laughs> um, now, for those of you who think this is incredibly not right at all, and children should not watch it, keep in mind, you who watch Peter Pan growing up, remember, it's about a child deductor. A child abductor. Called Peter Pan. If you don't believe me, think about it. Let's look at the plot. Look like what Peter Pan's motivation. He offers kids a place where they can never grow, a place beyond their childhood dreams and never wants them to come back home. Hmm. Very interesting. That sounds like when you, um, 
how you lure kids into your car, you know, you don't know them and they don't know anything, you know, but you say, hey kid, want to go to the movies? And get some popcorn? I'm your mother's best friend. Unless you're that person who actually rare chance that knows that person then and now the kid Would be smart enough to not, You know, I'm getting too confused. Uh, my point is the story I just said Now Zootopia do you know that's about a drug or uh, under drug that's base, base, basically a cop by cop movie that's about a under the dark side that that's that focuses a lot in crack on crack yes crack crack is what we call cocaine I don't know I'm not I'm not, I don't do drugs, so I don't know what the very one. So I'm not really an expert on this, so give me a break. But, um. <laughs> but what I do know is that crack and also the drug, and. I found out that, uh. in movies. They're both made by plants, right? And it also altered the uh, person, individual, person, uh, uh, personality, right? To a point when they kind of become irrational and violent, right? Well, yeah. Zootopia. Family friendly all the way. And that's free strikes on on the kids classic films. The list goes on. <laughs> I could go on, but uh, that would make this video too long. So I'm just going to say sarcastically, shall I go on? Okay, so I won't. Good, you're listening, myself? You're listening, Tyler? One, two, three, if you don't. Answer on the count three. I'm going to get very unhappy. Okay, three. I'll give you a four. So one, count four. Four. Good. That's just in case you're a little slow. That gave me the idea to make a sp idea, uh, video, especially for you, Tara, because I figure you want to, I, not used to be all listening to me, so especially when we see a uh, brain system and uh, there are a bunch of kind of things like that, so, by the way, when you're showing a movie to your dog or a TV show to your dog, you might want to not go by the rating if you, um, so, yeah, uh, you might want to not go by the rating because the ratings lie all the time. <laughs> so, let's talk about the plot, the plot, for the, the plot of the film. Let's get back to the film. So, she vows vengeance, Maleficent found vengeance on the king after he's having her marry and got a, a beautiful daughter. And these three idiot fairies give them the power of compassion and love and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> They're useless morons. And the king decides to 
have the fairies protect the prince and then realize that that was a stupid idea that they shouldn't should hide those idiots. Hmm. But he cares more about being the king than his daughter. So, Maleficent casts a spell on her that she said she will fall in the sleep like death and it can only be broken by true love's kiss. See, Maleficent, the reason why she did that because she knows that she believes there's no such thing as true love's kiss. But she got her heart broken by the king, right? Right, because she used her and clipped all her wings off when she was sleeping. After the did. <laughs> yes. So, anyway. Um. I'm enjoying this review too much. <laughs> and, um, so we, uh, Maleficent one time saves up when the dumbass fairies that are useless to plot and have no depth. Um, they're just annoying. These, they actually convinced themselves that they did a good job protecting the princess. And so Maleficent saves the baby from, uh, save the uh, baby from falling off of uh, the cliffs. And this, uh, her hench, Ms. One, why does she do that? And uh, the baby, the kid actually likes her, uh, and he just says, Stop touching me, I don't like children. <laughs> and and she calls the, the kid Beastie. So. As she grows old, up in her teenage years, she becomes friends with Maleficent and she becomes a mother figure to Sleeping Beauty. Maleficent does. So it's, uh, which is really beautiful to watch. Uh, this is when, uh, because Maleficent does such a good job shining herself down because she got hurt by the man she loves. And so, oh. and um, so she got hurt by the man she loved, so she just could start off isolating her herself and straying off from everyone. Then it takes this girl sleeping beauty to open her back, get her to open up again by uh front mother her. She just front my back at her at sleeping, at sleeping beauty and it's a pretty cute scene, touching scene to watch. It's very uh it really gets it really gets your your eye tearing. Uh um uh so um um Um, so, yeah, um, so, anyway, one day she finds out who Maleficent really is, and she says that she hates Maleficent, and tries to remove the crust from her, and she can't do it, physically not possible. For her, she can't undo the curse that she put on Sleeping Beauty years ago. 
So, um, she has to find that, um, loser that swing we fell in love with and wake her up with Shula and have, uh, have the prince wake her up with Shula's kiss like in the original Stephen Beauty and it doesn't work at all. <laughs> so, because it's not true love. Now, here's where the happy ending. Now, there's a twist to this. And, um. Now, there's a twist to this. Um. Uh, Melissa is very sad and very down that she can't wake her up. So, um, what happens is, um, well, uh, Melissa gives her a kiss goodbye on the forehead, and it wakes her up, and he, she says, oh, very young, mother, and she's all happy, uh, that she's okay, and <laughs> that's what, uh, assume you said, she said, called, always called her a fairy godmother, but she thought she, it was a fairy godmother, uh, and, uh, and, um, uh, Maleficent always called her BC, and, um, so, you know, because it was very touching because they both found out, like, realized how much they truly cared about one or another, and, um, now, the Sleeping Beauty wants to ask if she could come live with her, and Jesus is that is that's what you wish. So, so the kill the king and Moses gets her wings back, and they all live happily ever after. And tell the Maleficent sequel <laughs> that King gets coming out. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a complete story, but no, they decided they need to drink, beat this time, this time, so they had to beat this, this dead horse, this, this horse, beat this horse until it's dead. <laughs> and then keep on, and then just keep on abusing. <laughs> they decided to just beat the, kill, just like take this beautiful, magnificent horse. And shoot it right in the head and just beat it make, by making a sequel. Oh, and the sequel looks so, so terrible. It looks like the completely, pretty much slotted, pretty much every version of these characters I came to love. And this is an excuse to make money. And it looks like they didn't even thought it through. It's, it's quite an accomplishment, I think. So the sequel can go screw itself, unless by any chance it ends up being good, then I say, good is good. It continues the story, doesn't completely butcher each one of these reincarnations of the characters I come to love. And continues the story, okay. Then I shall give it a pass, but in the meantime, I will not give it a pass. This movie, I am giving a pass, and I am giving a thumbs up, because I really love this film a lot.